Real Estate 101 with Boyle Team Real Estate. Hello, everyone. It's Marlene Boyle from Boyle Team Real Estate, and we're here today at our podcast, which is Buyer Series. Um, episode one and we're here with Kelly Cooper who's the senior financial planner at RBC and today we're going to be talking about the first home savings account. Kelly can you tell us a little bit about your role at RBC? Well like you mentioned I'm the senior financial planner um, at RBC at the Curtis uh, location and I've been with RBC for over uh, 35 uh, years and um, have done all kinds of things um, within the RBC uh, entity but um, I'm sure you've seen it all <laughs> I have seen yeah. it all yeah but I really enjoy um, doing the financial uh, planning and uh, really taking um, people from one point to the next and helping them achieve their their financial uh, goals um, and that's the most rewarding part of my job too wonderful and we hear lots of great reviews about Kelly she's just wonderful at what she does um, Kelly, we're talking. We're here today talking about the first home savings account. Can you elaborate a little bit about the program? Um, well, yes. Um, it came out actually with the uh, the fall uh, budget. Um, the government uh, introduced the first uh, home savings account, which will be uh, available to. Um, Canadians 18 years or older. Um, at some point this year in 2023, they're currently working with the uh, financial institutions just to get the infrastructure um, in place so that they're able to uh, provide this uh, this account to uh, to people. Okay, I'm excited to hear about it. So there's no definite date, it's just going to come out at some point That's in 2023. Okay, um, is there a maximum contribution limit that the um, first time home buyers can contribute to the plan? Yes, uh, Marlene, it's um, 40000 is the lifetime uh, contribution limit mm -hmm. and $8,000 um, per year. Um, the plan is available to be opened up for 15 years, so you can work towards uh, getting your maximum contribution um, in the plan. Okay, and then is there an expiry date for the plan? Yeah, so the 15 years, um, you need to uh, purchase a home within that, uh, that period of uh, time okay. in order to, uh, to qualify uh, to use the funds for the program. Okay, and what happens when the 15 years comes up and they haven't used it? They so if um, the 15 years has uh, elapsed, hopefully that uh, time doesn't uh, come mm -hmm. that they're able to use it, but um, they have a few options. They can just do an unqualified uh, withdrawal. Um, however, there would be um, uh, penalties uh, to, to do that. Um, so there'll be uh, taxes uh, withheld and um, the contribution added to their income. However, they can transfer it to uh, an RRSP um, or a RIF, okay. um, and that way they can benefit from those plans going forward. Okay, um, so if, if I'm helping a client purchase a home, usually we, I know with the first time home buyers plan, um, we have to wait a certain amount of days for them to get their money out um, for closing date. Mm -hmm. we, would, we would plan our closing date around that. Is there a certain time period that it would take clients to get their money out of the home savings account? Is there a certain time period or would it come out pretty quick? Yeah, it comes out pretty quick. Um, we just need, um, obviously, their, their firm purchase agreement mm -hmm. um, to make sure they've purchased a qualified home um, in Canada. And then it's uh, one to two business days for the funds to be credited to their account. So it's pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That's good for um, the realtors to know. Exactly. That helps us with the closing date. Um, can someone qualify for the program if they have owned a house before and it's been a few years that have lapsed? Yes. So um, as long as it's so similar to the first time home uh, savings plan, um, you can be a first time home buyer or you can requalify if you haven't pur purchased a home in the five um, years. Okay. okay, so that that's actually that's good to know because some people have, got, you know, they maybe gone through a divorce or something's mm -hmm. happened, mm -hmm. um, and a financial crisis, and they couldn't afford a home, and then a few years later they can afford again. Exactly. So they can actually qualify again. What about if they marry um, a spouse who the spouse has already had the plan? They could they would still qualify because it's an individual plan. Correct. It is okay. So as long as they're. Um, qualify and are eligible okay. um, under the requirements of the first home savings account, then they're fine to uh, go ahead and use it. Okay. Um, is there a penalty if somebody withdraws the money early from the plan or, and, or doesn't use it if they withdraw it and they need it for just say some emergency funds and they don't use it to buy a home? 
That's correct. So there would be tax implications um, if it's not used for a qualifying home purchase. Okay. And would their contribution limit be, could they put it back in or that it's already, once it's been used, it's been used up? Correct. It okay. would not be reinstated. Okay. And then I noticed that um, the, you had said the money can be transferred. So in a marriage breakdown, for instance, if money has to be you know, allotted to one of the spouses and they have to remove money from an account, can that can that be transferred as well out of the account? Um, yes, so it can be uh, transferred to a former um, spouse. Um, mm -hmm. Again, if they qualify as a first time uh, home buyer, um, but it would not reinstate your own uh, contribution okay. limit. So it's really important to uh, seek that independent uh, legal advice when it comes to marriage breakdown. Okay. Okay. So if they, if they don't qualify for the first home savings account, could they transfer it to the spouse as an RSP contribution? Yes, they okay. can. But again, it doesn't restate your own, um, home, right. first time home savings account, um, contribution limit. Okay. 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 Um, um, if, if somebody passes away, what happens to their first home savings account? Please? So if they have a, a spouse who is mm -hmm. their successor mm -hmm. and um, they have a first home savings account, um, they can transfer it to their first home savings account okay. um, with no implications on their contribution limit. If they don't have a first home savings account, but they qualify as a first time home buyer, you can transfer it um, home, the ownership to them. Okay. Otherwise, um, if it's just a, a beneficiary, mm -hmm. um, then the funds will go to uh, to the beneficiary, but it will be taxable to their income. Okay. Okay. Yes. And there'll be, um, you know, obviously tax uh, implications with uh, doing that, but it will be added to their income. So if the spouse who passes away has, let's just say 10,000 in their account, mm -hmm. in their home savings account, but the, the surviving spouse has maxed out their home savings account can that ten thousand you said without implications that can go in there. That's correct. Wow! Really. So they could have fifty thousand. Yes. Wow. Yes, okay. because inherited uh, money would not have Im implications on their contribution. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, that's good information yeah. to know. Um, so, can the beneficiary transfer the money to an RSP if someone was a beneficiary? No. To save tax implications. No. Okay. No, it can't. It has okay. to go to them and be added to their income and have tax implications at that end. Okay. Is there a spousal plan similar to an RSP where the individual can um, get, get a tax benefit by having their spouse contribute, like contribute for their spouse? So the uh, first home savings account is an individual plan similar to the tax-free savings account. Mm -hmm. um, so it's individual. So you can certainly give monies to your, your spouse for their first home savings account, but you wouldn't uh, receive the tax deduction okay. on yours. Okay. They would receive it on theirs. Okay. 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 So no, basically no. Yeah. Um, what happens if somebody over contributes to the plan? Yes. So if you over contribute to your plan, similar to the, again, to the tax-free savings account or for your RSP for that matter, um, the government does charge you 1% for every month that that um, over contribution amount is in there. Okay. So you want to get out the excess amount uh, out uh, quickly. Yep, right um, away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or if you're at the end of the year and the next calendar year is just around the corner, you might want to leave it in there because your next year's contribution rate right. um, will be available to you. So Okay then you'll be fine. Okay. That makes sense. Um, can you, Kelly, can you give us a little synopsis on the difference between the first home savings account and the first time home buyers plan? Absolutely. Because I know there's some differences there. Yeah, there Absolutely. is. Absolutely, Marlene. There is a difference. So the first time home buyers uh, plan is when um, somebody can use up to 35,000 of their RRSPs. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you know, borrowing from themselves. Right. And um, so as long as they're a qualifying first time home buyer, they can use up to $35,000. However, they need to repay that um, amount back over a 15 year period. Okay. So one fifteenth is going to be due um, every year after you've purchased your home. If you fail to pay that one fifteenth back, then that one fifteenth is added to your income in that tax year. Okay. With the first home savings account, it's more similar to the um, tax-free savings in this way, where you've got um, a contribution limit of uh, each year mm -hmm. up to the maximum of the 40,000. So you can take up up to $40,000 from it, but you do not have to pay it back. You don't pay it back. Right. Okay. Right. Um, 
and you also with the first uh, home savings account when you make your contributions to it you also receive a deduction on your income tax to reduce your taxable earnings so right. similar to an RSP yes. um, plan so those are the the main differences uh, between uh, the two um, plans but again you can't use both of them right so you need to really decide um, which one is better for you and good to talk to someone a professional planner like Kelly Cooper financial planner and they can help you with those answers exactly. um, this okay. has been great information so far Kelly and I think this sounds like a wonderful plan for first-time home buyers for sure I'm excited to you know when it comes out and to tell my clients about it as well is there anything that you want to elaborate on about the plan you know that we haven't maybe touched upon yeah so um, with the first home savings account you do need to be 18 years or or Older, a mm -hmm. Canadian resident and obviously purchasing a, a Canadian home um, the thing is to once you hear about the first home savings account being available mm -hmm. get to your bank and open one up right because that will start um, putting your contribution, contribution room in room, place yes. so even if you can't uh, maximize or contribute mm -hmm. in 2023 next year you'll be able to do it um, and go back um, to this year. So um, I think that's a good um, plan. So there's for all retro. Percent. If they can't put the 8,000 in this year, yeah, then they can put a thousand in this year. At least you get it opened and you start get a full extra year. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's um, a big uh, advice piece uh, to give to first time home buyers. And, and I think this account is um, got lots of great uh, perks and, and benefits and flexibility to it. Yeah, no, it sounds absolutely wonderful. Um, well, thank you so much, Kelly. We had a wonderful time here and we appreciate you, you know, uh, sharing all your knowledge with us. And we will have Kelly back again and probably be talking about the, the um, first time home buyers plan and elaborating a little bit more on that because I think that's great information for clients to know. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. And um, um, just a couple questions. Do you have any books that you would recommend to anybody just starting out? You know, the young you, what book would you recommend um, for any type of financial advice? I think that the, the best book, and I gave one to uh, each of uh, my kids, is um, Dave Chilton's um, The Wealthy Barber. It's a really good, uh, easy read uh, for young people yeah. and gives you a good insight um, into getting started with, uh, with investing. That's wonderful. It would be nice, you know, if the schools brought in some of this information as well. Because oh. I know even when we went through the system, our kids went through the system, they don't have this education. Exactly. Right? That would be very beneficial. Yeah, just like so. budgeting, paying yourself first, and all those uh, good things that make you a good investor. Exactly. So the wealthy barber, everybody can take note. And um, again, thank you so much, Kelly, for sharing your knowledge again with us today. You're very we welcome. We appreciate it. I really enjoyed myself. Thank you. Everybody have a great day.